<laughs> so many people have been going to Shenzhen in recent years to build stuff. Are you buying into this trade or do you mostly work in the US? Uh, I, I travel all over the world constantly. I have an apartment in San Francisco still, but San Francisco is so expensive it's cheaper to travel than to stay in my apartment for free. <laughs> uh, I also have a, an apartment with a friend in Berlin, and, um, and I'm feeling more at home there. But uh, I, I hang out in Shenzhen a lot. Shenzhen's a really interesting place. There are a lot of uh, people from all over the world doing hardware there. And there's a pretty nice community of people there who collect and eat food and brainstorm and hang out. Um, so Shenzhen's amazing. China's pretty magical. Uh, you go to the markets and buy anything on a moment's notice, and they have pretty much everything there. You can order stuff on Taobao, and it'll come maybe the same day or the next day. And um, it's outrageously inexpensive. And and there's resources there to make prototypes to come up with an idea or to manufacture a small quantity or millions. And it's all there. It's it's an amazing resource. So yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's great if you're into hardware to check it out. <clears throat> and there's some WeChat groups. China, everything's on WeChat. I noticed that people use WeChat here too. <clears throat> I have a WeChat but it won't allow me to buy things with WeChat out of China because I don't have a Chinese ID card. But if you're in China, you have to have WeChat. That's how everyone connects. So if anyone wants to go to Shenzhen and hang out with cool people, connect with me, my WeChat ID is just my name without spaces, Mitch Alton. And I can connect you as well. Have you ever, have you had a commercial company take one of your open hardware designs and try to sell it before? You know, the weird thing is uh, open source is, open source, you know, you just put it out there and people can do whatever they want with it. So um, it wouldn't seem like it would be possible for a commercial company to take it and do something uh, bad with it. Uh, but indeed, this happened once. Uh, the way I've made a living for the last 15 years is with TV Be Gone, a keychain that turns off TVs in public places. In case you don't know about it, this is what it looks like. And this is actually how I've made a living for 15 years, making this tool to help people turn TVs off in public places. And um, uh, yeah, it wasn't a business plan, but it turned into one. And it's open source. It's been open source. Uh, it's been open source since. Uh, uh, about uh, a year, no, two years into it, I, I made it open source. I'll talk about that when I give my talk, supposedly at 10. And um, one of my customers was a bully. And one of the things I learned uh, over and over again, unfortunately, is uh, business is part of life. If you run a small business, it, it's part of your life. It's a huge part of your life. Why would you have different ethics for running a business than what you want to do and not do in your life? That's absurd. You know, like it's not like, oh, well, this is business. It's okay. So, anyways, this guy was a bully, and I, I knew one of the things from running a small business for a while is, as in life, don't do business with people you don't like. Just don't do it. It's your life. You will end up needing to hire a lawyer, and even if you like the lawyer, you won't like it at all. Going to court sucks. So uh, anyways, I knew not to deal with this guy, but it was so easy. He would give me money, and I would send him stuff. And, but he would always try to like, bully his way into me giving him stuff that we didn't agree to, and lowering the price and stuff. And I was just like, no, <laughs> we agreed to this. But he was really mean. Anyways, after a while of doing this, he took my product, TV Be Gone. He hired some really awful Chinese contract manufacturer to reverse engineer it. It's an open source project. All he had to do was download the plans. It would have been a fantastic product. And he used my name. He didn't even come up with his own name. He said it was me. And the package said it was me. And, uh, and it was a piece of crap. It was total garbage. A third of, I ordered a bunch just to see it. 
it, it might have been on market for maybe a few hours before a whole bunch of TV Be Gone fans alerted me to it. So I ordered a bunch to check it out, uh, and I talked to him and I said, hey, what's up? And he goes, oh, you weren't giving me a good enough price, so I made my own. And I'm like, it's fine to make your own, but you're using my name, and that's not okay. So maybe we can work out a licensing agreement. And he never heard from me. So I had to hire a lawyer because the third of the ones that I ordered didn't work. And the ones that did work didn't work well. And it was ruining my reputation, and I was getting all of these angry emails. <clears throat> you know, getting one angry email sucks. Getting a thousand of them in a few days really sucks. <clears throat> Even if you don't know the people, it's, you kind of take it personally. So <clears throat> I had to sue him to make him stop. He costs, he's from the UK, it cost me 65,000 pounds because in the UK, you can't get your legal fees back even if you're 100% in the right and the court goes with you. Yeah, so that lost a year of income. But, uh, but I was able to continue. <clears throat> and that guy is no longer in business, as it turns out. It wasn't fun. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, even if it's open source, people can take it and you know, steal it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of business, so many people are crowdfunding the other projects these days, right? But a lot of them fail, and, and people who made the courses lose the money, and they're also angry, and they write angry emails. It's just a fool, right? So, what do you think is like the most common mistake those projects make when they fail when they crowdfund the other projects? Yeah, well, there's a lot of uh, failure modes for crowdsourcing. I think perhaps. At least among the ones that I'm aware of, the biggest mistake is that people have a prototype and it's way cool. And then they think they'll get crowdfunding and they'll have a pile of money and all they have to do is manufacture it and everyone will be happy. Having a prototype, even if it works really well, getting from that to a manufacturable product is a huge, 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 huge ordeal. It's a lot of work to get from a prototype to manufacturable product and um, so but people without experience don't necessarily know that and I had to go through this um, myself earlier in my uh, uh, in my life and um, yeah it's stressful so <laughs> the thing I learned when I had my Kickstarter I've had a couple of successful Kickstarters one was for this weird thing called Neuro Dreamer and it's still a product um, it's a, a, a sleep mask, and it has blinking lights and sound, uh, music synthesizer, actually. Uh, and it has a 20-minute sequence of brain waves uh, playing at sound, with sound and light, uh, <coughs> playing a sequence of someone going from awake to asleep. And if it works for you, you, f you follow along just automatically and fall asleep. So um, yeah, I was nine months late delivering, and um, I was getting some angry emails, but I had some experience by then. As long as I gave updates and told openly what was going wrong, even if it was really bad news, people were fine. But there's this deep inner like, uh, urge to not put out an email to all your backers saying something like, well, just found out it's maybe going to be six weeks longer than I thought. And of course, it was, it was longer, and then it was a delay after that. And there's all these things that can go wrong. If I delayed sending an email for too long, that's when I got the angry emails. And it sucked. <laughs> but when I was open, if I just gave an update, even if it was bad news every three weeks, they're your backers. You know, They're backing you not because they're buying a product and they demand service, they're backing you and your project. So if you're open with them, they're, they're happy. Even if you have an urge to not give bad news, give bad news. Apologize if necessary, but you know, be open and honest and then people are um, supportive. That's my experience. So, uh, but the best thing to do if you have a Kickstarter is to develop the whole thing, um, get it ready for manufacturing, and then all you need is some small pile of money to press the spend button at the manufacturer, 
and then you're ready to go, and then you can actually deliver more or less on time, and everyone's happier. Isn't that the goal of a lot more money? Yeah, Not necessarily. You set up QA cycle, so when you do the prime manufacturing, you've got a heavy contract with your manufacturer, so for example, you don't pay for bad parts, but you're the one who has to do the QA, which means you have to ship QA equipment to the manufacturer. So that, uh, for example, and that's expensive to set that up. Or, 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 or go or there. Business pieces. You have to do multiple cycles of prototypes to figure out what is actually going to be manufacturable or not. This works. You've been through this. <laughs> no, I've, done, I've worked at companies that did small ones. I've been in the business a long time. It's yeah, it's not necessarily expensive, but it's time consuming. Yes. So you have to have enough money to eat and pay yeah. for your shelter and whatever. Um, even the prototypes are going to be expensive. You can either spend tens of thousands, even hundred thousands, several hundred thousand on prototypes. If you're doing cases, molds, blah, 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 that's even before you manufacture. That's true. It depends on your product, your project. If you want to turn into a product like this, the total amount of R&D, it was a year and a half of my life. Um, and other than <coughs> living expenses, the total amount of uh, getting this to a manufacturable product was four thousand so dollars. So on the on the opposite side, try build a like a relatively vaguely modern cell phone, and then you're talking hundreds, if not millions, yeah. to get to there. Well, so it's some, it, well, what you build might be somewhere in that spectrum. Your costs will be somewhere in that spectrum. Right. Well, actually, even cell phones like this is perhaps a, a point off the curve. Uh, you can. You can manufacture a cell phone for six dollars each in Shenzhen. You can manufacture it, but uh, it's to get to that point. Oh, you can get to that point easily because there are all these. Uh, Bunny has a bunch of blogs. Bunny Huang, who's here, who's supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has blogs about um, the ecosystem in Shenzhen, especially the the phone. The phone Shenzhen became magical, be starting with copying poorly iPhones. And, uh, and it basically became an open source ecosystem without licensing. It just made sense for people to uh, get together and make agreements and share with each other, each specializing, some overlap, and it was, and so now, many, many years later, you can buy all these modules and people are very open because they want to sell you all this stuff and you can bring it together and it's amazingly cheap. You know, that's just cell phones though because it's huge. Um, if you want to do something that's unique that you have to develop your own modules or your own yeah, chips, that's the big that can be super expensive. But the problem is if you just want to take the off-shelf design someone's already made, it's often no better than buying a pre-made product already. When you want to do the hardware, then you are probably going to do something unique, and then you start hitting the problem. Then there's the extra fun problem of you go it, you make it, you design it, then you spend a while building a software stack, making sure it works. It's not simple stuff. I mean, you're running the full OS, you have to do all the driver layers, and then you get it working, and lo and behold, you discover, oh, that I.O. chip or the extra chip you had on there, Rev A is no longer available, you have to get Revision B. But Revision B is completely hardware incompatible with Revision A. This and happens. so the cycle starts again. This and then it's happen. like, oh, wait, the screen we had for ordering, the supplier no longer has it anymore. Now we have a completely new screen. Oh, wait, that screen isn't available in these dimensions anymore. We have to redesign the case. Or and make your own screen, or yeah, there's all these things that can happen. And if you have single source things, then that company can go out of business. And mm -hmm. oh, there's anything that can go wrong, Murphy, Murphy yeah. prevails. So uh, basically, have the big deep pockets before you get into it. Yeah. So, but there are so many things you can do that are inexpensive as well. It depends on your project. And um, I, I might as well rant about this for just a, a minute or two. Um, uh, crowdsource funding is a great way to go. It's it's um, you know relatively new. The 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 way that people think is the normal way to do things is totally wrong. You don't get VC funding to start. Absolutely don't do that. If you're thinking about doing that, quit now. <laughs> Seriously, quit now because these <coughs> VCs are the scum of the earth. <laughs> There's like five exceptions on the entire planet. Okay, so they only care about money, no matter what they say, because they believe their lies as they're saying it. And they'll say things like, oh, I'm not like other VCs. I only care about you and your project. You I'm not like other share VCs. share list of five. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're kind of overloaded. But um, yeah, and so uh, they will 
do whatever it takes to manipulate you into them having over 50% of your company, and then they'll make amazingly stupid, <laughs> I have a mic. I have a mic, wow, power. Um, so uh, they will manipulate you into having 50% or more of your company, and they believe that they're hot shit because they make all this money, but you know, you throw enough money around, one or two of these are gonna be a hit, and they make money, and they think it's because they're a genius, <clears throat> but they're not. They make all these stupid decisions about your company, they don't care about it, and then you complain, and they fire you. <laughs> and then they run your company into the ground, and all of your years of life, and effort, and dreams go down the toilet. So this is not just a personal experience. It is a personal experience. It's several personal experiences, but this is the norm. This is absolutely the norm. And if you find someone who didn't have that experience, that is hugely exceptional. So um, find other ways of becoming profitable first. Then a VC might be worthwhile because you know, it's a risk. If you can get a bank loan, that's even better. You just pay back the money. Um, and the bank loans only happen if there's no risk. But if you're in a place and you want to give whatever you're doing available, make it available to more people, there might be a risk involved because there's no guarantee that you'll get that money back. And that's when VCs can be useful. And they can't take too much of your company because you're already profitable. So there's my little VC. Uh, talking about Kickstarter, uh, I think there's a lot of knowledge in the community about what not to do. I mean, you gave a bunch of examples right now. Is there a central place online that, you know, like a wiki or whatever, where all of this can be put, up, like, put down into you know, a single, uh, like at least some repository to say, okay, these are the things you don't do, these are the things that you, know, you might want to look at, or you know, if, if you're stuck here, look into this area. Because I, I hear a lot of people with really good success Started, and especially in other areas, uh, and all of them know these small little things. Either they've been in the business before, or they have, you know, ran through these things. But a lot of newcomers come in, and they are completely blindsided to a lot of these issues, especially in manufacturing. Uh, and having some kind of community support, uh, you know, especially in the open hardware world, would be perfect for, you know, getting uh, sort of into this whole. That would be great. You want to start one? Yeah, I was wondering if there's any around. Otherwise, it would be a good one to start. Under I'm not aware of any. Um, you know, I've given talks about uh, how to run your own small business and bring your uh, idea uh, into a project and a product. And I talk about what I've done horribly wrong, and so other people can learn from my mistakes. And other people have done that in their own way. Um, Bunny's had some blog posts about this, and um, you know, maybe you've done that too, I don't know. And, um, uh, but yeah, there's no central place for any of this. Some hardware accelerators used to have things like that, but like I'm, an, I'm a mentor at Hacks, but Hacks seems to be focusing more and more on unicorns. And you know what? Unicorns are a mythological creature. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they don't talk so much about this anymore. So, um, yeah, so people who go through this give talks, but not so much uh, have a central repository where they uh, invite everyone else to. Even having links to all these talks, I mean, uh, Bunny and Zog's talk at Linux talked about um, doing um, uh, injection molding. And that was a great talk about you know, how they did injection molding for their small little USB talk. Uh, things like these, I think are super valuable, and they're out there. It's just, you know, you need to go look them up and find them, and if you don't know where to look, it's, it's just gonna struggle. What you can do is you can do like one of these GitHub pages, with all like these awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome, yeah. Yeah. awesome manufacturing, yeah, yeah. Awesome. or awesome yeah. hardware Kickstarter. Well, so fill it with lots of wrong information and then wait for the people to know each other. No, you're wrong! And then go fix it. <laughs> but that's the, like, the, the red flag to the book. <laughs> Maybe. Don't have my laptop with me, but I'll start talking. Uh, yeah, do it. And then put the word out there, and then I'll add to it. Hey. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and other people will add to it. We can put the word out, and more people can add to it. Maybe it can be a thing. Let me know. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get at you when I do it. Great. <laughs>
But realistically, the way you find out this information is mostly by meeting people, sitting down, sharing beers, having you know, whatever, or getting into, into the industry. Yeah. If you want to do this, a lot go of, and get a job at a company. Yeah, a lot of times you have people. to learn before you really have to yeah, yep. Oh yeah, yeah, like uh, for 15 years of consulting, help, helping small companies with their hardware problems, I've learned so, so much of what not to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because these people who run the company, they're, they're clueless, like I was when I started. Uh, we learn along the way.